What about the genocide of the Canaanites? Hey, Higher Things YouTube theologians, Pastor Wolf Mueller here, talking about apologetic questions in the Old Testament. And one of the questions that comes up all the time is, what about these very harsh instructions that the Lord gave to Moses when the people were coming into the Promised Land? And remember, Moses didn't go with them, but Joshua led the armies of the people, and they came into the land of Cana, and they walloped them. I mean, they just destroyed them. And the Lord gave instructions. Well, they were supposed to do even more. The Lord gave instructions that they were to kill everybody. The men, the women, the children, the livestock. The, the understanding, and this is hard, so I don't want to take away the hardness of it. The understanding of the scripture here is that the Canaanites, number one, had taken the land that the Lord had given, appointed to Abraham and so forth. And they had so filled it up with satanic abominations that if, if any of them were to be left, that they would be a corrosive and polluting theological influence on the Lord's people. And that actually is what happened. <laughs> the, the Lord's people never worshiped the Lord with sincerity of heart. They were always following after the practices of all the people that were around them. And so the purpose for the uh, for this utter destruction of all the people was that God was visiting judgment on them for their abominations. They were, I mean, every commandment they were breaking, but the worst of it is that they were offering their children as sacrifices to the gods. And so the Lord is deciding to punish them, and he's using his own people, Israel, to do it. But there's two things that I think are important to keep in mind in reference to this genocide. Number one, the Lord waited a long time before he brought this judgment to bear. In fact, his own people, his, the people who are called by his name, the Israelites, are down in Egypt imprisoned and enslaved to the Pharaohs for hundreds of years, something like 260 years, that the Lord lets them sit enslaved for generations while he's given the Canaanites opportunity to repent. Now, I, I do not, so this is not in the scripture, at least that I've found, that the Lord was sending prophets to the Canaanites so that they might repent. But I, I don't think it's very difficult to imagine that the Lord was calling them to repentance and that they, they were murdering the prophets who were calling them to repentance until finally they, as a nation, have reached a point of hardness of heart to where there's almost, there's nothing to be done but judgment. But here's the second and most important thing to keep in mind, is that what the Lord desires from all the Canaanites is repentance. And that he is quick and ready to rescue all who would repent. And my best example for that is Rahab. Here's a prostitute who lives in Jericho and she receives the two spies and protects them in the name of the Lord. She becomes a, a Christian. I mean, she's a believer. She has faith. And so there's instructions provided so that she would not be destroyed. Now, she certainly was not the holiest or most moral or upright woman that lived in all of the land. We know that. And yet the Lord was ready to rescue her and to not only make her part of his people, but to make her also part of the descendant of Jesus or the family tree, the genealogy of Jesus. So that Rahab stands as the example of what the Lord wanted, his plan A. And all the graves of the Canaanites is really plan B, the kind of necessary uh, violence that the Lord would bring to preserve the land for his people. So I hope that there's a few helpful thoughts about the uh, genocide in Canaan.